Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely, and I am here with Atticus Ariston, and we are about to play the longest disc golf hole ever. Longest disc golf hole ever. If you follow me, you know that I've done multiple of these world's longest holes. Uh, this one is going to be 18 kilometers, or for you Americans, 11.1 miles. And right off the bat, we know it's possible to play a longer hole and we encourage you to go out and break this record this is the third time i've done this what i would like to ask all of you to do is when you break the record please break it by one kilometer don't be one of those people that go out and play the appalachian trail or something like i played a 1500 mile long golf hole uh, no break it by a kilometer you'll have a world record but then someone else comes after you and breaks it by a kilometer and then someone else breaks it by a kilometer that way a bunch of people can have fun. By the way, I'll probably jump in and break it a few times. You might even do it again, right? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe do it again. All right, so there's a reason why I have Atticus with me. Because I am in the most dangerous country on Earth. And you would say that Tasmania is the most dangerous part of Australia. Say yes. Yes. Yes, okay. It's way more dangerous than up north, right? Totally. All right, how many different varieties of snakes are there in Tasmania? Three, but all of them are venomous. All three of them. Can all three snakes in Tasmania murder you? They could. They definitely yes. Could. But at least they don't have venomous spiders here, right? Well, they do actually. Oh, really? I yeah. wasn't aware of this. They could kill you as well. Okay. The spiders here can kill you as well. Uh, this is Australia. This is, this is extreme disc golf. So you're here to point out the snakes, the spiders. Oh, worst of all, I asked him, I said, are there salties down here in Tasmania? That's the adorable name they've given to saltwater crocodiles. They call them salties. And I was told, no, they don't. There are no salties down here, but what there are down here are crockies. And crockies are basically like saltwater crocodiles, but they're so big that they use salties to pick the drop bears out of their teeth. So, this part of Tasmania, we're probably not going to see any crockies, right? No. But it's possible. It is possible. They're hibernating, but they're in springtime. Okay, so we may we may see a crocky. Uh, but if we get eaten by a crocky, it'll be like a million viewed video. That'll make your mom feel better, right? I will so. Okay, all right. Uh, so this entire thing, this is... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I hate to do this, but it's sponsored by a couple sponsors. Number one, scottstokely.net. You buy a bunch of cool merchandise. I'm going to be throwing my Tour Series harp because it's so predictable and my Tour Series looks because they fly so far without effort. And what are you throwing? Throwing a Star Maker 3 and a Platinum Pekka Pekka from RPM. Yes, and those are the discs we're going to start with. Uh, here's the thing. The minute you get off the road here, like you disappear into the bush, and like we had spent half the day looking for discs, probably eaten, bitten by crockies or eaten by poisonous spiders. So uh, we're going to be throwing like 50 meter throws. It's not about shooting this for score. It's about uh, staying on the fairway <laughs> uh, and we'll keep track of our shows. But it's, it's uh, I think we decided it's, the par is going to be four strokes more than whatever we shoot. Which means we're both going to get a double albatross today. Take that, Philo! <laughs> all right, you ready to get started? Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to speed up all the video where we're throwing. We'll speed up, but every time we stop to chat or talk about how the day is going, we will go ahead and air that as well with timestamps for you. So, first off, thank you for for being the guide. Uh, we'll flip to see who goes first. Okay. Ready? Heads. Oh, tails. I think I will go first. Oh. And we're gonna keep tabs, so let's go ahead and get this thing started.
first of our throws. You're you're next. Over the cliff. <laughs> Through the venomous snake, past the bunyips. The bunyips and the drop bears. Oh my god. This is legit insane. I think I'm taking a lot this. Uh, let's see. I'll come over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's... No, I'll take a lot this. <laughs> it's no. It's... Okay. First loss this penalty of the day. wanted to stop and check this out. Look at how beautiful this is. is that amazing? And not only that, look behind you. A waterfall. so good we're 3 km in we're 47 throws in oh, hey, gotta get some going. Oh, we're going. so how is it going so far it's good fun yes we've actually done pretty good we we've been uh throwing really short shots whenever we try to throw it far we're you know in the woods in the woods and this is really thick I didn't even mention this earlier, but they got these things called bunyips, which are like drop bears on acid. <laughs> Fair enough? They're like, if a, if a salty and a drop bear mated, and then it started worshiping Satan, it would become a bunyip. Fair? That's accurate. That's yeah. accurate, yeah. So beware of the bunyips. Uh, yeah, but I heard they only come after children that don't eat their vegetables or who disobey their parents and not do their homework. Is that true? Okay, hear that, kids? Do what your parents tell you, or else the bunyip will get you. Oh, no, it's amazing. I mean, actually, I think we've thrown good shots, but whenever we're throwing, like, 40-meter throws, it's way better. So we're estimating this is going to take about 400 throws. <laughs> yeah, but not long throws. No. 400 sound about right. We're at 47 right now. And we'll take a little break, but uh, that that, uh, that Pekka Pekka is on fire. Yeah, it is. Thing flies so good from RPM. What do you like about it? Um, you can just control it on short distances, forehand and backhand. And if you power it up, it just flips up really nicely and just rides straight. Yeah, it, yeah. it seems like it flies. It turns a little bit at slow speeds instead of like being overstable slow speed like most drivers, mm. right? Yeah. What did the park well, ranger say? Hmm? What did the park ranger say? Mm, the park ranger. Did he know what frisbee golf was? He's like, he's like, I don't know who you are, but Atticus, oh, wait, you, I, you're Atticus. Oh my God, I've seen you on the interwebs. <laughs> and he was so starstruck that he's like, I was gonna kick you guys out. I didn't realize it was you, Addy. That's, <laughs> that's what he said. You, you couldn't hear him where you were standing. Oh, but yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly. No, he said. Just ask him how we were doing, just checking in on us. He was very polite. No no indication this was a problem. He was just wondering what the heck we were doing throwing frisbees in the middle of a national park in Tasmania. And, uh, Fair we, question. I told, yeah. I told him. And I think his response was, fine, don't tell me. <laughs> but, all right. We'll eat a little snack and then we'll be good to go. Yeah, uh, 
I didn't throw it wide enough. And it's, they're swarming around my disc. to make Australia even more Australian so we made up a, a mandatory through the well mandatory roller through the middle of the murder hornets and first my shot hit one of the murder murder hornet condos and they're probably quite active now and then Atticus threw his and hit another one and so not only are we next to the murder hornets or as they call them in Australia hornets uh, Honey I bees. think we got them excited, so keep the camera rolling. This could be entertaining. Is it pronounced apophylactic? Anaphylactic? Apophylactic? Are you allergic? You think so? I don't think so. Alright, I don't think so. Okay, good. You're very brave. But... Oh, God. Oh, my God. You can't see them on the video. They're swarming now. I mean, we got them. We woke them up. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Were you scared? No, I wasn't scared. Murder hornets don't murder us.
Not bad though. Not that bad. Not bad, but it's definitely, we're definitely in the back country. Um, so, what year are you going to go on tour? Have you figured that out yet? Um, I'm thinking I'll first go over to America in three years time, I think, and play a couple of events in the amateur division, like Amwelds and the US Ams and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Maybe a few pro tours as well. That's not in three years. I'll be back. I think I'm, I'm going to be planning on uh, 2025. It's going to be my return to the tour. So I'll be 55. I'll be reaching my physical peak at that point. <laughs> Why did he laugh? That wasn't a joke. I was so serious. I'm only getting better. And, oh, these aren't potato chips. These are uh, high protein, no carb uh, nutritional bars. Made to look like chips. So, you've been playing for how long? Two years. Two years. Who's your favorite player on tour? Um, probably Simon Lazat. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Simon's a great guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Simon fan too. Don't tell Simon I told you that though. Because <laughs> I'm still going to compete against him in 2025. Yeah. But, so. so, having fun? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting sore at all? Or? I'm not as tired as I expected I would be. No, I mean, we're going at a moderate pace. Mm -hmm. It's like, it sounds like, like people think it's a lot to play 10 miles, but I mean, you should be able to... Like if you're in decent shape, you should be able to walk 10 miles yeah. on flat ground. And we're not throwing hard. We've been doing like 40 meter throws, trying to stay, stay in the fairway. And once we have some open terrain here, it's been super windy. Yeah. So, doing the best we can. <laughs> Everybody drives by. They think that we're, uh, we're stranded. The last people that came by and talked to us though, they knew what disc golf was. So even out here in the out, wait, it's not the outback, the bush, the Tazzy bush. People still know what disc golf is. We're there. We, we made it. All right, we'll uh, we'll check in in a little bit. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we're about 150 throws in. Yeah. No, no, not 150, no, about 180. 180, yeah. 180 throws in. Like, we can't throw far. There's like a headwind on every single shot. But this is why we stopped right here. Check this out. This is the, the native habitat of the Tasmanian Crockies. But check this out. The reason why we're safe here is that they can't crawl up the ledge because they've got tiny little legs. Imagine like a saltwater crocodile the size of a brontosaurus and if, if it mated with a wiener dog. That's basically what crocodiles are. They got little tiny, right? They got little little legs. I mean, like bunyip will like run you down in the parking lot and tackle you and take your wallet. Not crocodiles. They can't even get up this cliff. But anyways, we're not going down there so we're safe everybody. Right? And... You said the drop bears aren't native to Tassie. No, which is good, because we'd be in danger if they were. Yeah, yeah, so we got no fear of the drop bears down here. I mean, every once in a while they make their way over, but like the locals out at, uh, at the Great Lakes region, like them gun-toting 
Tassies, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they take care of the drop ears for us, so everybody's got a part to play in this this soap opera of life. So anyways, all right, we're halfway there, everybody. By the way, Lake Peta. Lake Peta. Pet, wait, Peta, how do you spell it? P A W D A R. Pet, pet. So, Peta? Yeah. Not Petter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, they don't pronounce the R's, right? Like, you told me that. It's not Melbourne, it's Melbourne. All right, so here's the, the all important question everybody wants to know. You're, you're 15, right? 14. 14. 14. Oh, this is this will, okay. So, then this should be no problem. What is the meaning of life? No, um, no pressure. It's just, you need to know. To, if you don't know by 15, it's over. To enjoy it and make it better for other people. I think. Okay, that's about as good as it gets, right? That was an unprepared uh, answer to I didn't. I didn't prep on that one. No, it's cool. I love that. So, Where is it like living in Tassie? I mean, I know you have nothing to compare it to, but I mean, I was asking earlier if you felt lucky to be someplace so beautiful, or if you felt isolated from the rest of the world because it's so far away, or... Yeah, I do kind of feel isolated, and I think in Hobart, it would be nice if it was just a little bit bigger, because I basically know everyone that lives there, right? and it's just so familiar, so, yeah. So, but something you want to do? You want to travel and... Yeah, I like to travel around. Maybe stay on the mainland for a bit longer, I think. Okay. That's cool, I love it. I mean, do anything you want to do, right? That's, not, that's the other part of the secret of life. So nobody can tell you what to do. Like, no one can put a ceiling on what you want to accomplish, and, or at least what, it, what, you, what you can go after. So, which leads to happiness, and you can help other people along the way. We just solved everything. Take that, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, morons. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll we'll check in probably at the end. We're only uh, five kilometers. Let's do it. Yeah.
Yep, so it was, uh, if anybody's asking, it was 344 throws. Kept track, every 10 throws. Uh, we, we basically threw at the same pace, so if we, we didn't get ahead of each other, just because it's too hard to keep track of individual scores, so we were kind of like helping keep track of each other's scores, so we weren't competing. So, 344 throws. Uh, by the way, it was par 348, so we both got a double albatross. Yeah, baby, <laughs> double albatross. I can't wait to tell everybody. I wonder if there's ever been two double albatrosses on the same card. That's got to be a world record. Has to be. Has to be. So I was telling you earlier, I got this theory. Like this is partially why I do stuff like this. I've always done things like this. Is that there's two there's two types of fun. There's fun now and fun always, right? Like fun now is is like it's cool, like roller coasters and watching a funny movie and playing around at disc golf, right? Like that's all like fun now stuff. But then there's also fun always stuff, which is stuff that may or may not be fun at the time, um, usually because it's hard. Climbing a mountain or running a marathon or you know playing a par, par 348 hole. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, but it's also, you know, it's, it's both. Yeah. It's both. But it's fun always because like a year from now when I look back at this, it's still fun. And then in five years when I think back of here and I look at pictures, it's still fun. Like I can't look at pictures of a roller coaster from five years ago and be like, Oh, wasn't that just the the dandiest old roller coaster? Like <laughs> like the fun's over with. Yeah. So I think that's what the the, the message if I have a message to give, is do things that are hard that you can enjoy and be proud of for a long time. Now, this is the fourth one of these. I did the first one. A couple guys in Minnesota did the, the second one. Then I did the third one, and I did the fourth one, and we're at 18 kilometers. Don't break it by more than a kilometer, people. I mean, I can't tell you not to do something, but like, let's let a lot of people have a chance at the record. Plus, I would like to re-break it. You could re-break it, and if you break the record, and then someone breaks your record, you can go back on and re-break it again. All it takes is just one person to think they're cool and do like a thousand mile hole. And it kind of just takes the fun out of it for everybody. So I think it's way cooler if we all kind of just, you know, silently agree to like do it in increments. Um, by the way, I was thinking of something too. As far as the like fun later, you know who's like I think the most fun for this? Is like is like this is hard, but this is reasonable. You know, didn't kill us. No. Nowhere near as hard as the guys that did it in Minnesota. Like you want to have talk about fun later. Every time they watch the record being broke, like when they, like when they watch this video, they're gonna go, oh that was beautiful, and that that was you know that was cool. Uh, what we did was harder. <laughs> they played in the freaking snow through a frozen riverbed. Like so they get like they're the champs of fun later because. Every time someone breaks the record, they're going to be like, so? Try doing it in Minnesota in January. <laughs> All right, so any final words? Future sponsor? Who's your future sponsor, do you think? I don't know quite yet. I've been looking at RPM bins, so. So, because that, uh, you were throwing the, the P.E.K.K.A. P.E.K.K.A. Uh, uh, like, perfectly. The only time... Like you lost it because it was on some like scramble shot with some yeah. weird Anheuser, but that thing was flying great for you. It was. It was. What do you like about it? You said it earlier, but yeah, I could just trust it on like all angles, and 
it just feels great and the low profile is nice for forehands as well. Um, yeah, it was just good. Yep. By the way, that's my lesson to you. Never miss the opportunity to plug the people that like sign your checks, right? <laughs> it's all about the, the check signing. Yep. All right, everybody. Uh, if you're looking for cool disc golf merchandise, go to scottstokely.net. Uh, including my tour series harp, my tour series looks. I love them both today. Uh, the harp is so darn predictable. I mean, this is a great driver, uh, but the, the holes we were playing, it was like, yeah, they have no idea. You throw these holes into a headwind, and it's like it's hard packed ground where the disc doesn't stop, and the minute you get a few feet off the fairway, or two thirds of a meter to the rest of the world, <laughs> you get a little bit off the fairway, you could be off a cliff, you could be in a lake, you could be. Yeah. Like you, you could be eaten by snakes or you know stung by birds or something. I don't know. It's uh, it, it, it's going to look a lot easier on the video than it was. I mean, we got to the point where we were throwing like 50 meter shots <laughs> in the middle of the fairway and happy about it, right? So, but my heart was, was perfect for that. Looks as a great driver. It flies a little too far though. Uh, great driver. Heiser flex. Uh, final thing. If you're interested in my a six month online become a complete disc golfer class go to scottstokely.net and if you're interested in my full day seminars go to scottstokely.net and there's classes taught all the time by Jonathan Nicholson and Philip Bartholomew uh, full day seminars so scottstokely.net everything's there thank you Atticus. thanks that was awesome yeah. see you guys